G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. All right, Sunday, sort of lunchtime here in Australia and the market's up a little bit, so 1.3% sitting on that $1.4 trillion mark, so very, very nice. Bitcoin, 34,000, ETH back to 2,100. And look, we've got a bit of a sea of green going on there, so some things are looking pretty nice. Uh, volume is up just a little bit, well, 39%, so that's pretty good, but up. Uh, Bitcoin dominance getting close to 46% again, so people are getting a little bit bullish on Bitcoin at the moment. And look, we're all just feeling pretty good at the moment. We haven't seen that weekend retracement that you know normally comes, particularly when there's been some upside. And so for me now, I'm really waiting to see whether maybe it's going to come first thing Monday morning because there's definitely been a CME gap that's been created over the weekend. So that will likely retrace. Uh, but again, there's no guarantees in life. They don't always get filled, but you know, high 90 something percent of them do get filled. All right, so again, the market is up. So what's moved the best in the last 24 hours? Because it's definitely some green going on there. Oh, nice, Telcoin, Theta Fuel, T Fuel. Uh, Ravain, Near Protocol, Quant, Luna, Ethereum Classic of all things, Bitcoin Gold as well, good lord. So we've got some nice gains there. And again, anything over 15% for me is a really good gain. Uh, you know, that kind of double digit gain is very nice. But then when you get above that 15% in 24 hours, that is a great gain. But generally also, when something goes up, in 24 hours usually if it's not in the next 24 hours it's just a little bit after that 48 hours you start to lose some of those gains in a bull market that's the way it goes things can't go up forever eventually they have a bit of a retracement and then they might start to make their way back up if you believe uh, that you are in a bull market and I still think we are but we'll wait and see all right what about losses though? anything not done so well all right, Thorchain, obviously, you know, got hacked a second time, so that's uh, hurting their price a lot. And then, look, a couple of other kind of DeFi plays and things like Engine, again, they had a bit of a pump, had a pullback, and Synthetics. So, obviously, if you haven't heard, uh, I brought this yesterday, that Uniswap has delisted a number of uh, tokens. Uh, so much for decentralization, but look, they want to stay, you know, out of the sights of the SEC and things like that. And they delisted 129 tokens, and a lot of them were from Synthetics. A lot of tokens from Synthetics. So it's down to regulatory pressure. You know, they came out and said that they, you know, are still fully decentralized and all the rest of it, but yet they have sort of crumbled to that regulatory pressure. <sighs> It's worrying times for synthetics, that's for sure. We'll have to wait and see what happens. I mean, I haven't lost faith. I'm not, you know, selling my synthetic tokens, you know, just yet. And I, I probably won't anyway. I just like the platform. But, you know, having most of their tokens delisted from Uniswap, which is a massive liquidity provider, you know, it'll make things very interesting. But they have Quenta, uh, their own exchange that's due to come out soon. We'll have to wait and see what happens there. But obviously, if the regulator, uh, regulators, sorry, regulators, come after them, then it is going to make things hard, uh, and we could see this price come down dr drastically. But again, I just don't see regulators coming in and trying to crush anything in this space at the moment, unless they're just you know really out there and just breaking you know all sorts of laws and that. And maybe they think synthetics is. We'll have to wait and see. But. Yeah, I'm not giving up on synthetics. I still really like it. Uh, prices are quite cheap. Again, they were down at $5 a while ago. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. And we'll, we'll move on and have a look at that as well. All right. Here's the Bitcoin chart. So again, this was looking red yesterday, turned green. And now it's looking red now, but it's only three hours into that day. So we'll have to wait and see. So it's very early sort of Sunday morning uh, stateside time, whereas we're about sort of lunchtime here. We'll have to wait and see if, uh, again, it still could happen today or maybe Monday. We have a bit of a retracement and possibly sort of come back down and, you know, test maybe 32,000. We'll have to wait and see. But generally things are looking pretty good. Again, on, on the uptick from here, hopefully we've found the bottom, but we're still not out. Like I said, we've got to break this level. Really, I'm waiting for us to break sort of 36,000, let's say 350. Uh, to make me think, yep, we're at least a little bit bullish, but then we've got to look at 42,000 basically, and then at the moment we're looking at about sort of roughly, if we get right over here, about sort of 47,000, because we're it's a definite possibility that we come up, touch this, and then come down again. 
I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I never offer financial advice, but it's definitely something I'm keeping a look out for. And again, you know, we had this down sending, uh, downwards trending kind of RSI, and we've broken through that. It does look like it's rolling over a little bit here, but that's just because it's early in the day. We'll have to wait and see what happens. All right, so crypto is under attack at the moment. Massive FUD campaign coming out, and I already spoke about it, BlockFi and Binance and all the rest of it. Well, it continues, and it's getting bigger. So BlockFi, uh, cryptocurrency lender BlockFi, is now facing scrutiny from regulators in a fourth state, that's Vermont, over the legality of its interest account products. So again, th this will continue for a while, and there'll be other states that are getting going to get on board, and it's generally states where the senators there are very embedded into the old tra old traditional finance and they're getting a bit of pro not just a bit of pressure but you know their investments are in traditional finance and this is threatening that so they're going to come out and do everything they can to do to try and fight it but knowing that they actually need to get on board of this so i don't think block is going anywhere like we can go over here and there is also another binance story so a major high street bank in the uk natwest has blocked payments to crypto exchange binance so again more binance fud and again now more block fud cryptocurrency is under attack and i want you to remember this first they ignore you they ignored bitcoin and cryptocurrencies for a long time then they kind of laughed at us and said, oh, you know, you're kidding yourselves. It's not going to go anywhere. And this is the stage we're in right now. Then they fight you. They are actively trying to fight us. Not so they can crush us because they know the old system's broken and it's not going to last. It is fundamentally flawed, but they are going to push this down as low as they can. Some will never want to cross over. So some, unfortunately, aren't trying to build a position in this new system. Some are just simply trying to crush it. But most of them who are at least, you know, have a little bit of intelligence understand that crypto is the future. The old system doesn't work. Fiat will go basically not to zero. Fiats don't go to zero, but they just they become worthless in the end because they can just be constantly printed. There's not all these big businesses pouring into crypto. And when I say pouring, I mean pouring. We can go right here. Blockchain based projects received upwards of four billion billion dollars in VC funding in the second quarter of 2021 alone. That is massive amounts of money. Big money is pouring into this space, but unfortunately, we're at this part here where they fight you. But eventually, we will win. Now, there's not all cryptocurrencies going to make it, and maybe, unfortunately, synthetics won't make it. And I'm not trying to FUD synthetics. I love synthetics. It's probably my favorite DeFi position, that and Aave. You know, some people say Chainlink is DeFi. I don't consider Chainlink DeFi, but they're kind of my three really big sort of DeFi plays. And I want them to succeed. But unfortunately, regulation has to come and maybe regulators don't like synthetics, uh, synthetic assets and that. We'll just have to wait and see. I hope that they just regulate it in a good way. And maybe Synthetics Network, what they have to do is simply adopt KYC and get regulated. And look, I really hope that that's what happens and that, you know, this space can kind of continue. And again, you can have synthetic assets as long as you're regulated and they know who's doing what and where the money's come, coming from and you abide by all the SEC laws and that, and they are coming out with new laws. I hope that this is just a bit of a hiccup in the road. And again, I don't mind if prices go down. I'll just buy some more. But I, I am just mindful that maybe synthetics protocol and, you know, similar ones are... Uh, what is it, Mirror Protocol and things like that, Synthetics Network Mirror Protocol. Unfortunately, they may be some of the projects that just don't make it. Again, fingers crossed that's not the case. And I have reached out to Kane. So over here, we can go to my Twitter. And I said, Kane, how do you see synthetics going forward with regulators cracking down on synthetic assets, mimicking stocks? And, and it's not just them. It was a whole stack of uh, synthetic assets that really were pulled from Uniswap. So particularly anything inverse, even inverse BTC, inverse ETH. So, you know, leveraging kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of synthetic uh, assets were taken down. Now we can go over to Kane's uh, 
Twitter here and look he hasn't really replied to too much he hasn't come out and mentioned anything yet and I've searched on the web and gone through discord and I haven't been able to find anything so there's not much there we can go over to synthetics IO themselves 12 hours ago they talked about this sales market thing but other than that they haven't addressed the kind of FUD that's going on at the moment and also Quenta which is the new exchange that they've got coming out Likewise, there's just kind of no real replies to anything at the moment. So, At least they haven't addressed what's going on. See, July 24th, so that's a few days ago. What do we got? Having problems exchanging their BTC for SUSD on Quenta. They keep telling me it's freely exchangeable. All right, so it looks like Quenta might be having some problems, but uh, they will look to fix that up, I'm, I'm guessing. But also, look, there's just nothing on here about them addressing you know, the issues that are going on at the moment. So that really is concerning. All right, something interesting for uh, all the Australians. So the Australian BN. PL company Zipco, so Afterpay and things like that, will reportedly launch cryptocurrency trading services to its American and Aussie users. Now, the plans to launch cryptocurrency trading services in the US and Australia within the next year, but it's not clear yet which assets are going to be supported. So, will it be Bitcoin? Will it be Ethereum? Could it be Cardano, XRP? Who knows? I mean, it won't be XRP, not with all the SEC stuff going on at the moment. But this is going to be very interesting. So uh, Zipco, Afterpay, things like that, using cryptocurrencies, you can see what's coming. It just continues to build, you know, PayPal, Zipco, Afterpay, MasterCard, Visa card, you know, you name it. They're all getting on board. Hence why I don't think cryptocurrencies are going to be that heavy regulated. There has to be regulation you know, protocols put in place to make sure they know, you know, KYC, I think that's going to be adopted pretty much everywhere. You know, anyone who tries to have a platform that doesn't have KYC is just going to have a really hard time surviving. The, you know, the, the government agencies and that will come after them and it'll be coordinated. It'll be worldwide. It just won't be one place. And they will shut down the avenues for projects that aren't going to get regulated and abide by laws they'll just make it impossible for people to kind of use them. Well, not impossible, but it'll make it very hard for people to get in, use their money, get out, and then try and change it into something that can actually be, you know, cashed out somewhere. I really do think that is what's coming. And for me, I'm all right with KYC. I don't mind. I think, you know, there's there's no issues for KYC uh, for me. I don't mind if the government or other people can see what I'm spending my money on. Again, I... I I realise that there's some privacy issues about, you know, if you send a transaction, they can actually look at how much of that currency you've got and how often it's been coming in. That kind of stuff, we need to work out how to make that all private uh, when we talk about private transactions, but not completely private. It's just private that people can't see all the back information. Like, you know, if they get onto the blockchain and they can see that, you know, maybe you sent 54 synthetic network tokens to somewhere else, and then, you know, there was a smart contract done and then, you know, something else came back. No worries. As long as they can't see, again, what happened before and then, you know, again, when that, you know, whatever comes in, let's say it was 54 synthetic tokens and you got back $100 worth of USDC and they can see the transactions going in and out, but they can't see anything other than that. And again, obviously there's KYC, though, so they can see who's doing it. They're the regulations that I think have to happen for this to kind of be adopted and go worldwide. Right, look, that's it for me. Bit of a short one today. There's not a whole lot going on, obviously, being Sunday. Definitely waiting to see what's going to happen to Synthetics Network, and I hope Kane, you know, comes out soon and, you know, makes a statement about what's going on, as does Synthetics Network and Quinta and all the rest of it. Now, you know, it'd be nice if Kane would come back and uh, answer me on Twitter. Oh, sorry, on, on Twitter, that'd be nice. But, look, he doesn't have to answer me, but I am waiting to kind of hear where they're at and what they plan on doing going forwards. I really hope they just adopt sort of KYC processes. I think that will be the first key to ensuring Synthetics Network, you know, is able to move uh, and continue on because without KYC, I think that's going to be the first major hurdle. And again, you know, we, you know, Uniswap's supposed to be fully decentralized and all the rest of it obviously isn't because there has been people that have been able to come in and remove tokens from there. And again, 
I agree with some tokens being removed if they're outright scams and outright uh, illegal. Yes, I think they should be able to be removed. Outside of something being illegal, you know, frowned upon and all the rest of it, no, there should be no way they can do that. If it's illegal or an outright scam, absolutely. I think, you know, we do need ways to come in and remove things like that. But outside of that, if it's just something that people simply don't like, no, it should never be about, you know, what people's personal opinions are and all the rest of it. So, yeah, interesting time for synthetics. Interesting times, you know, straight up in the space. It looks, well, there we go, it's turned green already. So 34,326. So we'll have to wait and see. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Everyone should be on that gain train at the moment, definitely over the last few days. And I'll see you next time.